Before you were here in, in Tucson, uh, you were in Hawaii for the uh, for the Apex Summit. You were the chairman. Yeah, I was the, the chairman Summit. of the CEO Summit for the that whole thing this year. So tell us a little bit about what what uh, what happened at the summit and what kind of the big takeaways were from a CEO's perspective. I think there were a few things that you know were concluded this year. Yeah, uh, you know, one would be that you know the the world really is now globally interdependent. That mm -hmm. you can't really have any major region be economically sick and have the other regions happily go on unaffected. So Europe catches a uh, So Europe catches, get, cold. catches pneumonia, right. the rest of the world's at least going to get a cold. Right. Um, but you know, the connectedness of these, like Europe, many people don't understand, Europe is the biggest export market for China. So you know, if, if Europe basically really goes into a, a, a deep reset, you know, then that's going to basically weaken exports from China. And mm -hmm. so even if everything was happy in the ASEAN region and the US, you know, it would still be a problem for China. And if China has a problem that way, you know, then other people get a problem. So right. I think it's just stunning the degree to which, you know, the, the leaders, both the business leaders and now the government leaders understand that, that this global interdependency is really, really there. A couple of recent examples of that, besides what's happened in Europe. So we saw this in Japan, the earthquake and tsunami in Japan, the impact on Japan. The one that's most recent has been what happens in Thailand. Mm -hmm. We've had floods in Thailand. Yep. And can't it's buy a disk drive. You can't buy a disk drive. It's disrupting the, the global technology of, of uh, supply chain in a way that I still think people are not fully coming to, to grips with the implications of that. Well, it really it symbolizes to me the, that, that interconnectedness that you're Well, the auto about. industry saw this with you know, electric parts where they thought they had a diversified supply chain and then they found that, well, all 10 guys they bought those things from still had a common part that came out of a little company you know, in Japan. Right. And so you know, it, it's very hard to really manage those kind of dependencies and get your total supply chain architected properly to avoid that. And the world is very connected now. So, were there key issues that you were in your discussions at the at the conference with uh, global uh, political leaders? Key kind of policy questions that were consistent from country to country, like things that you were really trying to zero in on. Well, I'd say another general agreement is that technology evolution is the basis of growth. That you know you're you're not going to get substantial growth out of all the things that people have been doing, you know, you're not going, your economy's not going to suddenly boom based on agriculture or anything else. So technology is the driver for economic expansion. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the importance of technology policy and getting governance right around that, I think is, is continuing to get higher and higher on the agenda of, of many of the governments. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in this conversation this morning, you know, we, a number of us, both Scott Cook and I mentioned, you know, Singapore as an example. Uh, one of the results that was, you know, came out at the APEC meeting was Price Waterhouse Coopers did a PwC did a, a its annual survey of on 800 CEOs, uh, asking you know where, where were they going to see the growth in the next 10 years? Almost completely uniform, you know, that the growth will be in the Asia Pacific as opposed to in South America, you know, Europe or Africa. Mm -hmm. And but another thing that that they they found was that. You know, the uniformity of regulation, uh, corruption came to the top of the list as a impediment to multinational expansion in the business environment. And so you start to see more and more these government, and go, you know, I'll say quality of governance factors, you know, really becoming at the forefront, you know, of whether businesses, particularly in a weak economic climate, are willing to go make those investments that lead to growth. And if they don't make it, then you, you, get, you get further decline in confidence, and you get this sort of negative spiral. And I think you know, we see a lot of that in the world today.